Hi guys, Graham here again from Bainbridge Technologies. Um, today I just quickly want to touch on a couple of things uh, in relation to inverters, in, mainly in caravans, uh, but can also be how they wind up in uh, boats and in um, the back of a canopy or a four drive as well. But mainly in caravans, I've seen this uh, quite a bit lately. Um, people have been upgrading their vans um, rather than, or because A, they might not be in a position to afford to buy a new van or don't want to wait for the extended period of time for the van because they've obviously since COVID and during COVID that became very popular. Um, and what they're doing is, is upgrading to putting inverters into their vans because they want to go more off-grid with electric appliances instead of gas or taking the gas out to do that, which is perfectly fine as long as it's done in a way that can be sustainable, um, that can be done properly. So, you know, and when we get to that, it's obviously with the new Australian standards, um, they have to be done properly anyway. And hopefully the 245 side of things, you're actually using a proper licensed electrician who knows that side of it, uh, and maybe even a separate than uh, DC to DC uh, installation done by a qualified auto electrician as well, because they are two totally different types of power, and not necessarily one professional knows how the other one works properly, and we're talking about a system that's trying to combine two of them together. What I have seen in a few vans lately is people saying, oh, they've come in or they've contacted us about having issues and maybe wanted to change their batteries or having, you know, putting new systems together and the battery's just not getting charged properly or in certain circumstances they're going backwards when they're on 240 volt and losing power instead of charging them and gaining power. The first thing I look for here then is what type of inverter they have. So we are um, a distributor here for Victron, um, products. Now for that situation we would always recommend a, a multi plus and by what we mean by multi plus is it's two things in one. It's an inverter and a charger in one. So when it's receiving 240 volt from shore power or plugged into your 15 amp socket on the side it will then automatically become a charger and charge your batteries and allow the 240 volts to pass through to your GPOs and therefore then it doesn't matter then whether you're running off of the 240 volt, you can plug your appliances into your GPOs or general purpose outlets, your 240 volt outlets, and get power. But if you if you had a, um, a blackout or something like that and you lost power, it would immediately turn over to the inverter and the inverter supplies power to those same GPOs. So everything that in the van then becomes live off the 240 volt, whether you're on the inverter or whether you're on 240. This in itself can cause an issue if someone's upgraded and puts in a standalone inverter with standalone AC chargers and they don't change the wiring or they don't get, have an inverter that has that uh, pass through, the 240 volt pass through. And there's still a lot of inverters that don't have that. Now what happens is the charger, the AC charger that they put into the caravan is plugged into one of the GPOs. Now if that GPO is getting its power from the inverter when it's plugged into your 15 amp socket, you end up with what we call an infinity loop. So therefore then the, the charger is pulling power from the 240 which is getting the power from the inverter which is getting the power from the batteries. Um, so the, it's going from the batteries to the inverter to the GPO through the charger back to the battery. So as you can see, there's that loop. However, it takes more power out of your batteries to do that than what your chargers can put in. Because if you've got, say, a 30 amp charger that's pulling 30 amps through the inverter um, to charge your battery, it takes more than 30 amps to reduce that because not only do you need that 30 amps, but it also takes power to run the inverter, to even just to have it on standby. So there's losses and everything in there. So eventually you run out of power. But the main thing is, you'll never see it charging. And in fact, what will actually happen is your state of charge will actually start keep getting lower and not go up. And that's a perfect, um, a perfect uh, scenario. And the first thing we look at when someone, I'll say something, oh, so if you're plugged into, into shore power and your batteries aren't going up and they're going down, the first thing we look at then is, okay, so the, the GPO that your AC charge is plugged into, is it getting its power directly from the 15 amp inlet? before it goes to the inverter, because if that's the case, that would be working fine. So if you've got your 15 amp inlet and you run through a junction box, you have 240 going to that standalone GPO and then have the rest going to your inverter so that all the other GPOs 
um, will then have to get power from the um, from the pass through of the inverter, or they don't, they have a separate one. So if your inverter doesn't have a pass through, then you have to have separate GPOs off your 15 amp socket and separate GPOs off your inverter, and one won't work on either or. But if your yeah if your uh, inlet is working off of that inverter then that's the issue that you have. So you have to, you know, the, the first thing to check then for, if that's the case, is the system that you're upgrading, did it have an inverter before? And if it doesn't, well then you need to get uh, like a transfer uh, switch or a, a manual box put in there that you can switch between the two so that your 240 is either getting voltage from the 15 amp inlet or from the inverter and it needs to be done. But as I said, otherwise just look for an inverter that has 240 volt pass through. It's a lot easier because then all you need to do is just have the power going through the inverter to your GPOs and then when you don't have that 240 volt plugged in, the AC charge is not going to work anyway um, and it's all good. So yeah, that's uh, just one thing to keep in mind that uh, your power for your onboard charger has to be separate from the power that your GPOs are putting the, the, of your inverter. So hopefully that hasn't made it too confusing for you, but hopefully that also may explain why you're having an issue that you're having. As I said, I've had like three people in the last four weeks that have had exactly that. Um, and two of them were actually brand new vans that were actually built, came from the manufacturer that way. Um, so whether it was an oversight um, that they changed and, and just put a standard inverter in there where they normally used to put their pass-through ones in and not think about it, but you know, these things do happen, but it's just an explanation as to uh, another reason why that you need to double check and make sure that, and the easiest way to check it is, is as I said, plug 15, uh, the 15 amp socket into the side of the van and if only that GPO um, that your charger plugs into powers up and none of the others do, that's all good. So until next time, bye for now.